pilot has been pretty well denigrated over the last 17 centuries. I, I found a fellow who is trying every legal means at his disposal to unload this case. Jesus is not having an active lawyer, and so Pilate kind of acts as Jesus' lawyer. And so did the early church view Pilate that way. The first three centuries of Christianity, the first all important three centuries, Pilate was regarded rather favorably by the early church. He's the only voice on Good Friday raised in Jesus' behalf. And he had a wife who's half Christian already, uh, saying have nothing to do with this righteous man. So remember that? And dreams are big to the Romans and that unsettled Pilate. So he's trying, quashing the case for lack of evidence. He's trying the Passover amnesty routine. Shall I release to you Jesus or Barabbas? He's trying a uh, change of venue. You remember when he hands the case off to Herod Antipas? Luke tells us that very important detail. Uh, Herod Antipas uh, was governor of Galilee, the one who had killed John the Baptist. And here's an example of where the secular evidence and the biblical evidence come together so beautifully, you can't even see the seam in the picture. You can't even hear the gears mesh. Remember how Pilate's trying everything to unload this case. Nothing works, not even the change of venue. But even at the, at the end, he's gonna release Jesus. And at that point, the prosecution plays out its trump card. If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. For whoever makes himself a king speaks treason against Caesar. So it was beautiful blackmail. And indeed, it responded to an episode that happened one year earlier in Rome. Bible doesn't need to mention all this, but it does explain that passage. They had been hostile with one another, and it explains why Herod Antipas is pleased that he could see this magic show, but even though Jesus didn't perform. What a nice gesture on Pilate's part. This is why Pilate sent Jesus over in the first place. He wants to mend fences with this tattletale next door. See, Herod Antipas wants Pilate's job. He lusts after it. Pilate's in charge of Samaria and Judea. Uh, he wants to be in charge there. He's already got Galilee. He's already got the Transjordan area called Perea. And by the way, that's why he executed John the Baptist at his, uh, his Fort Lauderdale, or his Miami Beach, on the Dead Sea, at Machairus, see? That's his, still, his territory. So if he also gets Samaria and Judea, then he would have reconstituted the kingdom of your old dad after Pilate proved a failure. This is why he's constantly tattling on Pilate and how this all makes sense now. And we can see how the secular evidence plays in here so beautifully. And now, Pilate's right at the, at the cliff. You know, it's Jesus or himself. And he opts for number one, himself. Uh, any surprise there? I don't think so. But again, it is not to make any kind of hero of Pilate, but it's to make him more understandable against the background we have of this governor who changed history by his decision on that day called Good Friday.